Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and uh, welcome to uh, fxstreet.com, their webinar series that they put on every day for you all. My name is Greg Mikloski, and it is July 31st, 2012, or 31st July 2012, I'm doing it the American way here. Anyway, I hope everyone's enjoying the uh, Olympics out there and enjoying our own little Olympics in the foreign exchange market. Uh, today's topic I'm going to be focusing on is attacking the smaller currency trends. Uh, uh, you can see my particulars there on the screen. My email is greg at fxdd.com. My Twitter is gregmikefx. You can also follow me at 4x Live. My web commentary appears on f4xlive.com. Before we get started, uh, let's uh, take care of business here with our risk disclaimer. Trading foreign exchange is risky. You stand to lose a large part of your risk capital in trading, so be sure that you understand uh, and you use only risk capital that you can afford to lose. During this webinar, I don't intend to give any buy, sell, or hold recommendations. Just hope to educate you, mentor, mentor you in the world of foreign exchange trading and uh, with today's topic being on the smaller currency trends. Now, for those of people who may be uh, familiar with uh, myself, maybe familiar with my book. This is my book, Attacking Currency Trends. And so, uh, with the, you know, you, you normally think that uh, in a uh, market uh, uh, or in the foreign exchange market, what typically happens is, uh, you know, there are a few big trends in the market. And uh, what we've seen here of late, however, is a lot of little smaller trends. Uh, don't uh, get me wrong, there are trends still in the market, you can still take advantage of these trends. They're just, um, they're just smaller in nature and there's a different way that you can approach these types of mar markets and then you know, hopefully or maybe at some, some point they may turn into a larger trend. So instead of uh, attacking the longer term big moves in the foreign exchange, we're going to attack the smaller moves in the foreign ex exchange market. By the way, uh, for this uh, uh, webinar, in honor of this webinar here today, I'll offer a special on my book. Uh, we're going to take $6 off. Use promo code PROMO if you order through attackingcurrencytrends.com. This is a horrible commercial uh, for my book, but um, anyway, if you're interested, uh, uh, go there and you'll get $6 off. $32 uh, uh, is the going price. Let's get started. Uh, enough of that commercial stuff. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the sterling versus U.S. dollar. This is an hourly chart. Look at all these smaller trends uh, that we've seen here in, in the market of late. Someone, someone may look at this market and make the conclusion that the sterling versus U.S. dollar is not trending. So Greg, Greg and his talk about attacking currency trends. Well, it just doesn't pertain to the markets, markets in, in, in uh, the environment that we're in here uh, today. In, uh, and, uh, but uh, I, uh, I choose to not think of it that way. I choose to think of trends as those opportunities where you can take advantage of this move to the upside, this move to the down, this, the, these types of trends, which add up to quite a lot. And those people who have nice little account balances as a result of trading these micro trends, these smaller trends, you know what I mean, for those people who have been frustrated with uh, in these, uh, uh, these little trends, I want to remind everybody that trends are, whether they're big or small, trends are where the most money is made and the most money is lost in trading. And so it's your job, folks, as a trader, to kind of catch these trends and recognize these these trends, and have and, and maybe have a plan as far as how you're going to trade those trends. We're going to talk about that here today. Now here's the euro versus U.S. dollar. Now in the in the month of May, what do we have? We <laughs> this is a nice nice long trend from top to bottom, and actually took near. Yeah, Really, the whole whole month we had the high here, and the low came in on June first. The high came on on May first or May second or whatever the first day of the month was, and and the low came in on June June first. And so here's a nice little trend to the downside. It took about a thousand pips. We've had had a nice little little trend to the downside here. here but what I want to uh, point out as well is that trends transition to non-trends, and if you 
if you look at this period right here from this point uh, over here to here, this is where the market started to transition more into a non-trend, as, as was the case here. Now we had a little test to the downside last week and uh, a, a move back into this non-trending. But really, for the most part, for the most of, of July, we've been in this uh, non-trending um, environment, this non-trending market where we've had little little trends up, little trends down. Oh, we had a few little fa failures along the way, but um, those are also part of this type of market that we're currently, or this type of environment, if you will, that we're cur currently in. So just because the market is not trending now in the month of July and maybe going forward like it did in May, um, it does not mean there are not smaller trends that you can attack. You know, I like to think of it in, in, in that that in these smaller type trends, you have to make hay when the sun is shining. You have to go out there and attack even the smaller trends out there and take what you can get from this market environment. Otherwise, might as well just take the summer off, go to the beach, go to the Mediterranean, go where, wherever, maybe just stay home, do something else uh, um, with your time. Um, you have that choice as well, but I do think that there are opportunities in these smaller trends to attack them. And so the sun has been shining, but uh, for smaller periods lately. And the question becomes, why? Because everyone wants to know why, the, why we're in this environment. Why do we have this environment? So, uh, and my simple answer is there's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot going on in the world, and when... <clears throat> when there's just this, uh, this this cauldron full of, inf of of stuff happening from a fundamental standpoint, traders get unsure. You know, one you know, think of it. You know, one time you th you're, you're thinking bullish, the next time you're thinking bearish, the next time you're thinking bullish, the next time you're thinking bearish, and this is a, this goes on for you, and it goes on for other people. As well, you know, you're a microcosm of, of the whole, the whole. And so, if it's uh, going on for you, it's probably going on for other people. And quite frankly, the market, the market, as in all the traders out there, mainly the big, guy, big guys who move the market, they don't know which way uh, the market is going to go. And if they don't know which way the market's going to go, it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. So just take it for what it's worth. Price tells you a lot, folks. Price tells you what the market is thinking, what the market is, uh, when the market is sure of which the, which way the direction is, and also when the market is unsure of which way the direction is. And, and uh, you, I just take it for what it is. It's, it's the price actually tells me what it is doing. And when it's trending, the market is sure what it wants to do. And so those are when it's fast directional move in a larger trading range. Those are the characteristics of a trend. Fast directional move in a larger trading range. When the market's not trending uh, from a long-term perspective, like we've seen in the month of July, you may get fast and directional and uh, ranges that are longer than what is normal maybe this month. Maybe not normal from a uh, from the month of May standpoint. But you uh, you know you kind of put it on a relative basis and you try to attack those uh, smaller trends. Now um, there's so there's a lot going on in the world and we're really in this idea of crisis management. If there are problems, there tend to be attempts to create solutions and those so, this going from problem to solution um, is what uh, drives the market one way and then drives the market the other way at times. And so since there is so much crisis as well. Uh, businesses and consumers and central banks and governments uh, do not have any confidence. And guess what? Neither do the traders. And so the traders become very uh, scared and frightened about what may ha what may or may not happen down the road, as as do businesses and consumers and central banks and governments and all these things have no confidence. Yet, yet um, I mean, consumer confidence and Michigan sentiment and all this other stuff may move up and down, down, but you know, if if I were to look at myself, and if I'm sure other, you, other people out there would look at themselves, it's not like it was before. Confidence is, is a fleeting thing. It comes and it goes. And um, uh, so uh, that's, 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 that's why we have the markets that we're in. And uh, <coughs> uh, 
uh, excuse me. And so as a result, global economies cannot get to a cruise speed and maintain that speed. Chairman Bernanke of the uh, Federal Reserve, he talks about this idea about how the economy just can't get to that, that cruising speed that allows a self-sufficient recovery to take place. And in a picture, what he refers to is uh, something like this. Now, historically, what we see in the uh, U.S. employment uh, uh, in recessions and, and then growth periods after recessions, what you, what you t tend to see is a spike up in unemployment. Everyone follows the leader. You have, you have uh, people, uh, businesses cutting back, cutting back, cutting back, and then all of a sudden you reach a peak. Now, in 1982, we reached a peak of unemployment, you know, somewhere close to 11%. Didn't quite get that high. This is in the U.S., but, it's, you know, it goes for other countries as well. Didn't quite reach that high in this, this year. And look at how the, uh, the number of jobs lost. This is the non-farm payroll change. It's on this scale over here. Uh, the unemployment rate is over here. But note, note here how it's fast break this way and then fast break the other, other way. And I'm giving a basketball term because we're on the Olympics here. But the, uh, you, you tend to have everyone follow the leader this way and then it goes, uh, follow the leader the other, other way. And it, it's this other way that you get to that cruise speed where people start to get hired and those people start to, who get hired start to spend and those, that spending, uh, in, in, uh, increases, uh, businesses' confidence and businesses start to hire other people and those people start to spend and, the, and, and they have to hire more people. And so you get this, this move to, the, and, and tends to be fairly quick move back to the downside in the employment, uh, unemployment rate. Uh, so you got a spike, the upside spike, uh, and, a, and a, not, a, it's not a spike, I guess it's a plummet to the downside uh, in the employment rate. Now let's uh, fast forward to what we just went through here uh, in recent times. And note here, uh, we went a little bit past the uh, what is typically the uh, floor as far as uh, job losses here by about a factor of two. And uh, in the process uh, to the upside, we had this unemployment go up. And notice how the unemployment rate didn't move all the way up to the old high. Why? Because people got discouraged from working and uh, from uh, entering the workforce. It was just so bad. They 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 gave up. They gave up. And this. Uh, uh, this yellow period is the same, uh, or this yellow period is the same uh, length, if you will, uh, of this period right here. And you can see how from here to here, where the, where the market found its first bottom here and then started to move sideways, uh, it, it took this amount of time, this yellow period of time. Look at, look at what happened. Look at where we were here. We only did this amount. So it's not developing that acceleration, that momentum that Chairman Bernanke is looking for and other central bankers are looking for as well. We're not getting that push, that oomph, that, that the, the engine is sputtering. And this also has effects in the uh, foreign exchange market. We'll get to, you know, we're going to get to charts here as well uh, soon. But uh, this week. This week, where, where are we at? We're at this point where uh, tomorrow we're going to have the Fed, Federal Reserve, uh, have their interest rate decision, and on Thursday we're going to have the Bank of England, we're going to have the ECB. All are in play for a change of policy. It's a word I like to use, or words I like to use, in play. Something's going to happen. It's, it's, there's, a, there's a tension in the market that something's going to ha happen. And so we're all in play, play here because you know, we can't, can't quite kickstart that economy. And, uh, going and um, <clears throat> so so the question becomes as a trader what do you do when all all central banks are in the same boat we're all they're all working and doing the same thing that may also cause markets to move up and down up and down why because you know the policy is all the same so if everyone's lowering rates stimulating doing uh, doing um, uh, you know, that type of work in the market, you tend to get uh, favored nations uh, in the currency market. So the dollar may be favored for a little bit, then the euro may be fa fa favored uh, for a little bit, and you get these up and downs, smaller trends in the market. So what you do is you stay in the boat and ride the waves up and down. And the waves may be uh, smaller than in the past, but that's what you have to do. You have to adjust your trading toward that in environment 
And so for the most part in July, we have been uh, riding waves, um, especially in the euro, up and down, up and down. And you've seen it in the pound sterling as well. Um, and my advice to you is don't is fight it. Don't fight these little waves, these these um, uh, smaller uh, trends. What you have to do is start to accept them. Start to accept the market for what it is. Start to accept the market um, as something that um, let me turn this on. Accept the market where um, you under you understand that uh, the chances are we're not going to be moving in the May type, uh, uh, make the May type moves in this type of environment. So you have to start, you know, if you, if you can't beat it, join it. So accept that uh, fight. So you still, um, as a trader, you still can be prepared to uh, trade those waves. And they may be smaller uh, than, than um, uh, this type of wave. Um, and uh, this is a uh, this is a, a surfer, and look how many times, times how how this uh, this surfer seven times his height here is that wave, and so this this wave represents May, or it may be smaller than this record wave wave that was uh, recently written, which was about 80 or 90 feet tall, 11 times the size of of this man uh, is that wave. So our waves may be smaller than that, may look more like this wave where it's maybe two times the, the, the wave this is the type of wave that i surfed in the jersey shore when i was wrote, when i was growing up only two times my height but boy i was scared to death there um but they those waves can still be profitable to your account you, you just have to be know how to surf them um so in smaller trends there are certain things that i uh think that you as a trader um need to fall need to be uh and the first one is you have to be more patient you have to be more patient with your 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 uh trade your trade entries this is a type of market where you you know you want to um uh, uh do a lot of trading all right it's a type of market where you you sit you understand that you may miss something along the way but you certainly want to make sure that you're that you are uh, patient with your trading, kind of trade um, extremes, uh, and we'll go through you know, what I mean by e extremes Extremes when we uh, start to look at the charts. You also have to be prepared to react. You have to be, I think you have to be prepared all the time in trading. You have to sort of be looking ahead, looking for that those key support and resistance levels using tools that, we're going to define, uh, that are going to give you clues as far as the uh, market goes. Uh, and so you have to, uh, and then you have to be prepared to react because uh, uh, you're going to have smaller trends, and so you want to get on that smaller trend as soon as you can. But uh, those smaller trends are going to uh, fail at some point, and so you have to be prepared to react and, and think about the other way, and and think about uh, I got to get out, get out now because this market may turn around and go the other way. You need to uh, be sure that you define risk, you limit risk, you accept risk. And if you're, ri you're, ri you're, you're defining the risk where you are wrong, that's what it means, and make sure you limit your risk. You don't want to risk a lot in a market that's going to have smaller trends. It doesn't make sense to risk a lot in a, in a market that has smaller trends. If, you, if you're not going to make as much on the trend or the potential exists that you, don't, you aren't going to make as much on the trend. So you want to make sure that you limit your risk and then you accept your risk. And by accepting your risk, you're, you're decreasing your fear, but you're also saying that um, this is my stop. This is where I'm out. And if the market doesn't do what I think it should do, get out. And, and so that's most important in this types of mar markets. And be sure to uh, follow them. You also need to target where you're going. In a smaller trending market, there are going uh, and a market that's kind of uh, from a longer term perspective not trending as uh, like may um, you there's going to be a lot of different levels along the way that you're going to be able to follow to target in your trade let's say you're moving uh, that, that, that uh, you're, you're targeting a trend tr a smaller trend to the downside well make sure that you understand that there's 
so the, the next le next target on the downside is uh, X, and then you go to Y, which is a 50%. And then you need to go to the 200 bar moving average, and then then you need to go to the the 61.8% uh, uh, retracement. It starts to tick these things off. Managing the trade becomes even more important in these smaller non-trends because the trends aren't as fast. They aren't as as directional. Uh, they don't necessarily go as as far as the uh, trend uh, trending markets of of the May type period in the euro versus U.S. dollar. So you have to you have to be on your toes. These are tougher markets, and, the, and one of the things that you that you have to do is make sure that you target where you're going, know where where those limits are, and it'll help you manage your trade, manage your stop losses, make sure that you at the end of the at, at the end of that trade you're going to have some profit in that trade um, and. Um, uh, that's always good good for your trading, especially in these types of markets. You don't you don't expect to make a ton of money during these types of markets, but you want to make sure that you come out unscathed, making uh, some money. Um, a, a thing I like to put in traders' minds uh, uh, to kind of understand these markets is don't love at first sight these types of markets. Don't fall in love love with uh, I love the bearish side; it's going down forever and ever and ever. I like or I love the bullish. Side, I want to you know be married with you forever. But like the market, like the market. All right, uh, this uh, this market is uh, uh, pretty good on the downside. I like I like this environment. I like the market, and then transition into a love. If the market is going to trend for something longer, and that longer may be you know for a day, for for four hours, for five hours, you know, like it. Love it a little bit, but be ready to end the relationship, okay? Be ready to uh, finish it when the market tells you it's fin finished, and we'll go through some clues that the market might give you in just a second. Also think in terms of, uh, uh, at times, to choose to invest profit in, in, some, in a little bit more love or end, end the relationship. That, what I mean by that is, is if the market is starting to move to the downside, start and you have good trade location, okay? So let's assume that you find a level that is good resistance, all right? And we'll go to the picture here in just a second, okay? Find a level that has good resistance, and you enter a short position, and the market does what you think it should do, and it starts to trend, so you start to target levels along the way. Well, if you have good good to great trade location, all right, off of a nice key resistance or support level. And, and sometimes, especially in the beginning of this, this smaller trend, it's worthwhile to invest some of your profit in, you know, that first phases of that love, that, that like-love relationship, okay? Um, you know, where where, you know, you have to, Give it a second date or a third date. Think of it in terms of, of that idea where you have good trade location and you're going to risk that profit for the chance to get to that second date, the third date, to get to know the market a little better. All right? You have the visual in your mind. And if you do that, you'll be able to book that type of profit that's going to allow you to get through this um, this this uh, smaller trend type environment because because you know it's going to be more difficult than a smaller trend environment like we've had here in July it's going to be a little bit more difficult to make to book those profits so if you have good trade location invest some of that profit pro profit in the relationship and uh, and go from there we have uh, Big Wally saying uh, this market sounds like my last girl I had to leave her before she uh, ruined me I waited. Waited too long and went bankrupt. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, you got the idea. You got the idea uh, there. Why? Uh, and that's exactly what I want. And and you know, here's the thing, folks. I like to think of trading. Trading is life. Okay. There are so many similarities between trading and life that I think it, 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 if you, if you uh, follow me, if you uh, listen to me from time time to time. I'm always making little comparisons to to life 
in in uh, in general. And I go through my life. I go through day to day outside of this environment and and equate it to trading. I do it to myself because I you know I'd be crazy otherwise. But I see very uh, a lot of similarities uh, in relationships and trading and in sports and trading and the Olympics and trading and in in all these uh, all these uh, uh, things in life. And uh, so it's kind of like the uh, the tr uh, you know Groundhog Day. I don't know if you ever seen that movie, but uh, you know where things just happen time and time and time again. Uh, and it's just the same cycle over and over again. Uh, if you if you do that, man, you you have you have a little bit more under. Oh, I think I do. I mean, I think I have a little bit more understanding of life than I did before. Where where you know the ups and downs of life used to get 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 you down. Well, if you think of it in terms of trading, you know, when you're at the bottom, um, uh, whether it's in your your P and L things or my, or or the bottom of a trend, things will things will turn around at some some point. So uh, anyway, it's um. Uh, it's, uh, it's just, uh, just, a, just, just a thought I like to, uh, uh, put out there. So let's get into, uh, some charts. I take my screen off here. I'm going to put it back on. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get a drink here. There you go. Um, now I assume that you're all looking at the euro versus U.S. dollar. It's a... Uh, our hourly chart, right? So if someone could say yes, now we're going to have 56 people saying yes. Can you see my chart, please? We see it. Okay, good. Thanks, Mike. So Mike was the first one. Good. Yep, 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 yep. Here they all come. All right, good. So um, this is uh, the picture of the euro versus U.S. dollar. It's an hourly chart up here. And um, what um, what I want to... What what uh, I have here on the chart, well, I'll introduce what I have here on the chart. I have a uh, green line that represents the 200-hour moving average. It's always, uh, it's my, uh, it's simple moving average. It's, that's the one I use, um, or one of the two I use. And this blue line represents the 100-hour simple moving average, okay? The other tools that I use, I use uh, trend lines, and I use uh, Fibonacci uh, retracements. Now, um, you'll notice here that there aren't many uh, trend lines. I can put one in here. Let me put one in, say, cut across um, here. One, two, three. Kind of break a little bit below it, move a little bit higher, higher here. So uh, I, can, I can use uh, that. Um, but um, I also have uh, what I call horizontal, horizontal trend lines or what I call remembered lines. Uh, and uh, these come into come into play in a non-trending, smaller trend type market environment. So this goes back almost to the first of, of the month. The first five days of the month were kind of trending to the downside quickly, fast, directional. And then we got into this section of the uh, month where the market starts. You know, we're trying, we're continuing the trend down here. We move a little bit up, and then we trend down, and then move move back up. But but this area right here is an area where the market was what you know has been non trending. Non trending basically in this area with some moves to the downside, you know, up and down type of moves. And uh, you can see you can see where it started to develop right here. This is more of a trend to the downside, finishing off the trend. But when we started to get in this area, we started to see things happen here that were not usual, okay? Not typical. And when I mean not typical, I look at like these V's within a day, V's within a day, move to the upside, move to the upside, move to the downside, move to the downside, move to the upside, move to the downside, move to the upside, move move back to the downside. I look at these here, this 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 um, formations as being abnormal. It's not normal. It's not normal to have a trend type move fast and directional to the downside fast and directional to the upside um, being followed by a fast and directional move in the opposite direction and so I start to turn my uh, turn myself around into thinking um, all right this market is not trending anymore it's more non trending um, I got to change my my way of looking at the market to more of I, I like the market let's see where it goes this relationship goes uh, and from opposed to I love the market, like I loved the, 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 this this trend 
move to the downside, much different than what we're seeing here. Now, there are little trends along the way, and, and lo and behold, we did break down to the downside. And you got you got clues to this uh, break to the downside outside of this 10-day trading range from these kind of horizontal remembered lines. So when the market non-trends, what I like to do is is find these, uh, and this is a non-trending period right here, is find these areas where the market tends to find support and resistance, finds those those ex those extremes or the or, or those areas within the non-trending area where there's there tends to be a lot of reaction, a lot of um, uh, energy at those levels, and I'll I'll just put horizontal lines across horizontal lines or horizontal trend lines across the screen at those levels. So let me uh, give you an an example. Uh, so let's look at um, uh, well up here at the highs. You know, so we have the this high right here, and pr prior to that we have you know a, a few ceilings here at this level, and so these ceilings kind of come into play here. And this break to the upside here, we have one, two, three, you know, four different bars in our early chart. The market breaks to the upside here. We're making a, 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 a break like in the Olympic uh, bike race I was watching the other day. Move away from the from the pack right here. And what happens? He, he makes them move away from the pack, and what does it do? It fails. And we reestablish this high, this ceiling here, in this bar right here. See it right there? And that starts this trend to the downside. Failure up here, move back to the downside. So the market then starts its move, continuation of the trend to the downside. Now, now we get this re retracement up here, here um, after this trend ends. We start to get, and look where, look where the market starts, remembers, finds that resistance, and we find the early sellers against this old high, this old ceiling here. So we find early sellers here, we move down. And we come a little bit below our 200 bar moving average, and we move back above, and we find them again. And this time, we can't get above this level, so the market comes right down. So we're developing a um, a nice little area up there where you as a trader can lean against the next time the market comes up. And so the market comes right up to that level right here. Uh, we have this uh, break break uh, of the pack right here. We start moving higher. We break above the 100 and 200 bar moving average here. After fail, failing below, we come back up to that level. And boy, you know, now we have another one. Now we start to develop, to develop the pattern even even more, and and we continue on the downside. Now let's take a look at uh, you know other levels here. Uh, we can look at this low right here and compare it to these highs right here, this low right here, this highs right here. Um, and we break through the level. Just because it, it has a support here and resistance at this level, uh, when the market starts, when the market fails uh, at here, the 100 bar moving average, it has a momentum that's going to be able to get it through that level. And you can see the market moving sharply to the down, down, downside there. And and so the, these levels become levels of energy where either you're going to get a bounce or you're going to get a breakthrough. And we, we break back up to the upside, come back up to the 100 bar moving average. Where do we come down to? We come down and test this level level right here again. And we find support where there was old support, where there was old resistance, and where the market bases off of that level. These are the types of clues, folks, that you want to take in your trading, that you want to um, in, a, in a smaller trend environment. To, to be able to have these lines in place, to be able to react off of them uh, when the market gives you those opportunities. And when the market comes down here and the market start, is breaking really fast to the downside and we start to break through the 100 bar moving average and break through this uh, support level and break through this line right here, it takes off to the downside. And what does it do? It fails. And where do we find support? Boom, right to the upside. And it's almost at this level right here that that the market says, all right, I loved it to the downside here. I, lo I like this market. I'm, I'm dating. I'm on the second or third date. And I'm here I'm going. I really like it. But, boy, she did something to me that really got me off. And so, uh, you know, no, no, she's not the one for me. I'm going to like it. I'm going to like this bull move right here. And we come back down to that level right here. We break to that level here. We break above, above the level here. It moves higher, higher. And you can um, – uh, these lines become important to me, and all of them have an importance to me. This 122.87 level corresponds with the low from um, uh, June 
June 1, 12287, right here on the daily chart. So I want to go back to the hourly chart. This 12287 level becomes an important level. Where does it become an important level? Well, in today's trading right here, market came up to the 87 level. Where do we come down to? Right back to this 46 level, which had a low right here. The low. I, for those people who've been following, this has a floor here. It has a ceiling here. These are like little nuances in the market. You can count the number of different times the market has this resistance around the 46 level. Resistance kind of makes a break above the 100 bar moving average in the 46 level. Fails. Another break right here. Fails. Uses that 46 level. You can see the number of times. And I just put a line there. And and. You'd be surprised why we find support right here at the 46 level. Oh, we have the 100 bar moving average there as well. The market finds support that moves moves higher. But but all these levels are are of of importance in, in my trading. So in my um, uh, in my trading in these non-trending type environments, put these lines across your screen. And where do we go up to, to today? Right, right up to our area right here. Uh, area of resistance and where do we stall at? Right, right at the, uh, those levels. This is an important area. If we break through that level, we're going to go higher. If we stay stay below it, we're going to go lower. It's level where traders can define risk, to limit risk, and, and use them to their advantage. So we can see, you know, in today today how we found support against certain key key levels and resistance against certain legal levels, and kind of trade. You can trade these little little trends and be active or proactive in this this type of environment in these types of trades for your day. Yeah, we get these, you know, the, this move up and this sharp move down. Well, why do we why do we have this sharp move down? Well, we came right up to our our key level here and traders know that level exists. So, if this high at this point comes in at 122.82 or I'm sorry, what is this high? This high comes in at I got to put my The high comes in at 123.18. Yeah, 123.18 and and a half is our high here. Don't you think traders might have been willing to sell at 18 and a half with a stop above the 22 or a stop above the 33 level? 15 pips? Yeah, why not? And so they did, and 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 uh, you know they made a few bucks along the way. Um. Question: Bro uh, Brokers will uh, will like you, um, Boyke, uh Or th that's a comment. Uh, brokers will like you, and I work for a broker, so um, you know full full disclosure here. Um, yeah, yeah, but it, it, uh, I'm not. I'm not. Remember, my 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 goal is to be patient with your trade, define risk, limit risk, and and such. And when the market's not trending in a large type way. Like we did in um, in May, you got to take what the market gives you. And so, yes, brokers may like you because you're, you're doing. Um, it seems like you're doing more trends, or you're changing your mind, going short and going long. Um, but that's the entire type of environment we're we're in. If you're going to be stubborn uh, with your uh, trades, and there are times to be stubborn with your trades, like here or even like here, and we'll go through this uh, trade right right here and, and kind of look at um, you know where you want to uh, turn your like into a little bit more love. Um, but but uh, it, those are the times that that you want to be patient. But when the market's not giving you a, a lot, when the market is uh, is taking and giving it away, you have to be prepared to uh, 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 get out. So let's take a look at um, this idea here or this this type of uh, Trade here and, and 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 understand how you know I may may be uh, looking at it. Well, first of all, we did have this uh, break out, this breakout, this break to the downside here. This 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 range right here was 10-day trading range, two weeks, about 172 pips from the low to the high. Now, from a historical perspective, folks, that type of range is is a, a very narrow range over a two week period. So from a from a trader's perspective, uh you know, you would anticipate a, a move to the uh out, outside and we did get that break to the to the downside. So I don't necessarily think that 172 pips is going to stay the same for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. I sort of expected this move, this break to the downside here. And when the market um 
so when the market did did break, and there were some clues clues up here. Let's even go back back to this trade. Um, when the market had support line one, two, three, four different lines, and this level corresponded with this 28 level, which was a you know another one of my remembered lines that I had across there. When the market started to break below this level, it gave you the clue that hmm, this 172 pip trading range had the potential to really to or this relationship in the short position had a, had the ability to move a little bit more more toward a love type relationship. You get on the second, third, or fourth day and on the way way to the downside. And if you catch the these trends and, and there were there were you know there were clues up here as well. Uh there was a clue up here at the high. It went through the tar next target right here. It went through the hundred and two hundred bar moving average and these support levels right right here, these uh remembered lines right here as well. It went through this trend line. So we we're breaking through a lot of different things here. Um it gave you the clue that the market was ready to go moving to the downside. Now all all good trends in these uh these uh shorter term trends do end at some point um in the way to the downside Downside went through 121.31, which was is a midpoint of the euro dollar's lifetime range. So this is a key level here, 121.31. Um, that uh, if I were to go to the daily chart or the monthly chart and put it the, from the low, which is 2000 to the high in 2008, 121.31, a key level, the midpoint of that year's of that range. Um, it comes in at the 121.31. So um, now the market move down, move to the downside, and then I start to think in terms of, okay, well, um, what, what, um, uh, where are we going n now? And I start to get clues here at the bottom that the price started to move above this 121.31, 31, 31 level, which is at midpoint. And so I started to think in terms of, well, maybe this love affair is about to end. Maybe I should start thinking in terms of uh, liking the bullish side a little bit more. And so you start to use your tools like Fibonacci retracements, you start to use things like uh, this 121.31 uh, uh, retracement level, and you start to, start to follow along and see what the market is giving you, see what the market is telling you as far as price goes. And so when the market goes up and corrects up to this point right here, which is near our old low here, finds the sellers, comes back down, moves back up, moving above and below the 31 point, 31 level, and then we get this point right here, this point right here where the market moves below the 31 level, it looks like it's on its way back to the downside, but holds the 38.2% retracement, the pip or two below that level, and, and moves below the 100 bar moving average and starts to move up, it's saying, get long. And note here what happens at the 62 level. At the 62 level, we had a low here. We had a break to the downside here. We had a high here on this day, and we had a high here right here, and the market started its trend to the upside. It started to reverse. It started to, to make its move to the upside. And for you as a trader, when you, when you, if you recognize that the market is in this type of environment with a lot going on, with a lot of uncertainty in the market, you have to jump on these, these trades. You have to jump on this trade. You have to jump on this trade. And you have to see where they're going. Invest in that position. Have the market do what it wants to do, or has to do. And you know, and, and this is the type of trend, this is the type of smaller trend that you want to take uh, to the upside. So what happens here? So the market starts to move fast and directional to the upside. Uh, we come up to a peak right here. I put my Fibonacci in from our low to our high. Uh, the market comes down. Uh, you'll note here, uh, it, it's kind of in, in the way. Let me get rid of uh, some of these. There we go. I'm going to get rid of that first leg to the upside. And, uh, you know, in a, in a trending or a, a smaller trend market, you got to target your level. So where do we go? Where's our target on the top side? We have to get to the 200 bar movie average. We have to get to this 50, 11 level. We have to get to this 28 level, uh, key level right here. Notice how the market comes up to the 28 level, moves a little bit down, and then breaks to the upside here. Notice how it comes up to our, our, our uh, uh, comes up uh, through our levels here at the uh, 47 to 55 level, comes back down to that level, finds support, moves back up, comes up to our peak right here, and, f and stops right at that level. 
but note here, you know, you measure your corrections. You measure the correction down to the 38.2. That 38.2 comes around the 47, 48 level where we have these floors here. We have this ceiling here. We have these ceilings here. We have this break to the upside here. We have this ceiling here. We break to the upside. We have this floor here, floor here. Market finds support against those levels. It remembers those levels. In these non-trending markets, it remembers these support levels. And when you see it break through here and come back to the upside, you start to get buyers against this support. Instead of sellers through it, we start to get buyers against it. And it breaks to the upside and we move. And we have this breakout to the upside. It takes us outside of our, our range. Note here, we come up to our level right here. It breaks us outside. The, and Friday, what happens? Break below this level. Boom. Haven't seen the level yet or since until this point right here. To this point here today where the market came back up to uh, up to our level. On the downside today, where, or yesterday, where do we find support? Found support against this old old low right here. Found support against this le level right here around the 28 level. What is the 28 level? 28 level is a low from June 1, folks. A low from June 1. That's where the market found support yesterday. The market bounced off of that level, came back to our 38.2, or uh, that's not 38.2 of that move, uh, but come back, back down to um, our support level against these, these remembered lines right here. Market bounces off that level, comes back up to the top high. So that, folks, I, I want to end it there. Uh, um, you know, I see some other comments in here, and other people may have have um, have uh, questions. But I, uh, and so I'll take a few questions before we finish up. But what I what I um, want want to impress here on in this webinar here today is that there are these um, uh, there are smaller trends in the market. This market is uncertain. It doesn't know where it wants to go. And this is why we have these environments where we get trends to the downside, trends to the upside, trends to the downside, trends to the upside, trends to the downside, trends to the upside. Sometimes these markets will will um, will move in a faster trend than what we saw in, during these periods right here. But they uh, – and and it's those types of markets where you want to – you, you want to stay with them as long as you possibly can. And the good news is that they tend to move fairly quickly, fairly fast. So when the market broke through this trend line, it moved fairly quickly, fairly fast. When the market broke through the up, upside, through the 62 level, it started to do its transition fast, 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 trend line. But in these types of markets right here, you've got to be a little bit more patient. You have to be um, – you have to start to measure things and and and, and kind of wait, wait for those opportunities for you to um, – to attack, to to get on um, almost at failure times. You know, when the market breaks a little bit below here, to catch on to a little failure and use these these small risk areas, these where you can define your risk, where you can limit your risk to potentially have good trade location for a move to the next level. Targeting is very important. Going from level um, through level to level to level. If it fails. Get out when you get another opportunity, um, and you have a bias. Perhaps look to lean against these levels. Look to lean against the 100 bar moving average. Look to lean lean against the 38.2. Look to lean against this old remembered line. Um, and if you get these things all in in place together, you may be able to get good trade location and move yourself to the upside. You might make friends out of your brokers. I'm not saying that you want to go out and trade trade every little move. That's not the environment we're in. Just be patient. Wait for the right right levels where you feel confident in your trade. Where you can define risk and limit risk. Go from there. Uh, and you never know. You may catch a little trend. Uh, you may fall in like with somebody. Uh, and that like may turn into love. We'll see. Anyway, have a good uh, week. I'll see, I'll see if there's any questions or comments here. Um, if you want to – uh, can we just uh, look at the charts and go back to June 2010 and expect the uh, euro range similarly? Um, you know what? Uh, Carlos is saying go back to June 2010. Um, yeah, you know. We don't know when this is going to happen, all right? We don't know when this is going to going to happen. Um, this is a June 2010. The market kind of moved down, it moved up, it moved down, and then it kind of trended to the up up 
side here. And uh, Carlos, um, uh, I, I um, you know, the fact that the market bottomed here and started to, to move up doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be what, what we're going to see here. I mean, we're seeing this similar type thing, move down, move to the upside, um, and, and maybe we're going to trend, trend to the upside here in the uh, euro, euro in um, uh, in uh, in in uh, this this month, so uh, or or for the you know the rest of the summer summer that may happen it 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 may not you know I, but but what what you have to do I think in this type of environment is a, a determine what your bi bias is in the market and you you determine your bias against tools that are going to tell you either bullish or bearish now this this floor here here or this low here today um, had uh, you had a reason to get long here or the or, or I, I it, when the market was moving down here you had a few reasons to get long you had the 38.2 percent of this move to the upside that's one reason this is the most recent longer term trend or, or smaller trend that we've we've seen that's move that took it up from 12041 to 12388. So so this this if I were to look at this market I would say that the smaller trend uh, was more to the upside. So this move back to the downside here is is really a corrective type move and we came down to the, the uh the a lower level here found support against here. These are all old lines. Found support against 38.2 and had the 100-hour moving average here. Now we hadn't been below the 100-hour moving average since this point right here, where the market based and moved higher. So it, it's it's right to think that perhaps there might be some buyers buyers here. Now how far this goes, I don't know, Carlos. I don't know how far it's going to go. And just because it rains similarly. Um, in June 2010, and it happens to be July 2012, doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen now. Um, the, but we do know that the bias is more bullish here, and so you know what we do need to do, what what needs to happen, of course, is we need to get above this level right here, this ceiling right here. We know we know that that level exists. That level um, uh, was a resistance. Uh, uh, here it was resistance. Here we broke to the upside. Here and saw the momentum and saw the momentum back to the downside when it failed right there. So we have to get to that ceiling. And then if we get to that ceiling, we can go through this ceiling right here, here or this area right here, and we can go through the high right here and we get through this high right here. And you can see the lines that I have in here. These are all, all lines I'm prepared for. I'm wait, waiting for these targets to be uh, to be. Uh, taken out along the way and that's part of your homework as well is to, to, to start to to uh, uh, not only have where you are right now but target where you're going in the future and so so how far it goes I don't know no one knows you can sit there and put a story on that they're going to have QE and all this other stuff and the dollar's going to get weak and and Europe is going to uh, uh, throw everything out at 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 the um, uh, uh, you know in solving the problems uh, but uh, it doesn't necessarily um, mean that the euro is going to go go flying. It might mean that oh things are really bad in the euro, and the euro might go down, or what's discount in the market. I don't know, but I'm gonna I I know I know one thing. Um, if it gets above this level right here, and and you know if I'm long here, and if it gets above this level, I'm feeling better. And if it gets above here, I'm feeling even better. If it gets above here, I'm feeling better. And by the way, I can move my stops up. If the market goes above this level right here uh, and goes uh, and, and moves above this level right here, my stop is now here. I'm now managing my stop to, to these, these, these key target levels that I just broke through. And that's what you have to do. So hopefully I'll help you. Uh, Big Willie, uh, Red Greg's book and attend a seminar in person. I've been uh, to two, and he has uh, the best system I've found, and it's not hard to follow. Oh, everyone reads that. Uh -huh. uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Josh, our friend Josh. Uh, of course, no one has that uh, all, but uh, just making a point that his messages are the best. Okay. Uh, do you guys get uh, commissions? Um, uh, no, we, you know, we, the, the, the we, uh, FXDD. Um, has uh, no no commissions. Uh, well, I don't know. You know uh, there there are there are there is a system that we do have a small commission that's going to give you 
um, the uh, uh, the uh, you know inner bank close spread, um, and there uh, there's another system that we have um, more bid offer spreads is, is where the um, money is uh, money is uh, is made. Uh, uh, let's just listen quit the hard sell. All right. Uh, no, we bought this book last week and following it here. Greg has given so much. I feel I owe payback to anybody who will listen. All right. Uh, I'm going back and forth with stuff here. Bup, 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 bup. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, Greg, this week ECB is taking uh, talking. Fed is also talking about uh, what shall we buy or sell. Um, I, you know, there's a lot going on this week, uh, folks, and I'll end it here because um, uh, they're, they're saying um, that I must uh, – I think that's people in the room. Got commissions to talk well about you. Uh, okay. Um, the um, uh, This week we have all this stuff going on. There are expectations. There are different expectations out there. The Fed is going to lead it off tomorrow with their with their decision decision. There's, you know, talk of that they open up QE to an, an unlimited amount of QE until this whole thing starts to work its way out. That's one one alternative. There's a lot going on on uh, in um, uh, in the um, in the markets as far our expectations for the Fed. And then we're going to have the ECB. We're going to have the Bank of England. Bank of England's not necessarily expected to do anything. They're in the middle of their Olympics. They also did something at the last meeting, that, and so they may not do anything or the expectations that they don't do anything. We also have the unemployment rate on Friday. All this says to me what? Risk. Risk is what? Decreased or increased? It's increased, okay? So I am paying attention to the market movements and trying to be patient, trying to find trade location. I suggest you do the same to try try to find trade location that get key levels that are going to define your risk and limit your risk. And if you get uh, get good trade location, then then it's about targeting where we go and how we go. So I wouldn't if you don't have a position going into the Fed meeting that's not in a profit profit um, profit. Um, in a profit, and I'm not talking about one or two pips, I'm talking about maybe 30 or 40 pips, um, then I wouldn't necessarily hold that position. I would wait for something to, a level to break out to the upside or to the downside through one of these levels. So, for instance, if I don't have a position in the euro versus U.S. dollar and, uh, and the Fed decision is coming up and the market's right at this point right here, what I would do is make sure I understand where the 100 bar moving average, make sure I understand where the 200 bar moving average, make sure I understand where these levels are at the top side where I have to go. And if the market moves through this level level right here, this ceiling right here, and starts to move through this level, I'm going to be a buyer here at the 8, 8, 62 level with a stop below the 33 level. That's the way you trade trade numbers is let the market decide which way it wants to go, let the news come out, and then get the retracement where you can define risk against another level. If the market moves to the downside and we break below the 100 bar moving average and we come to this 200 bar moving average and the market starts to retrace up to this 100 bar moving average, I'm going to be selling against this 100 bar moving average with a stop right here. That's the importance of having these levels and these lines in your charts. They're going to define your risk. They're also going to tell you where you're wrong, and they're also going to tell you where your stop loss is. So um, that's it. There's a lot of comments about um, um, uh, 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 about uh, stuff out here. Stuff out here. Sorry, I didn't get to all of your questions, but uh, they're saying uh, thank you very much, Greg. And uh, uh, time is up. Um, I got to. Uh, I'll be back on August 29th. It's at 1600 hours. I uh, um, and uh, thanks to the people at FX Street for having me here today. Good fortune with the trading, folks. Good fortune with this week. Make sure that you define your risk and limit your risk. It's going to be a wild, wild week. Um, in fact, I'm taking the rest of the week off. Have a good one. Bye-bye.